Good Wednesday evening to you, and uh, so glad that you're joining in with us tonight, and I hope that your week is well and your day's been great. Thank you for the privilege of sharing with you tonight and uh, for you taking the time to, to join in with us. Um, we're going to be talking about just simplifying your life. I'm going to basically just give you some steps to simplify life tonight, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that. We'd love to have your comments. Uh, your prayer requests, if you have prayer requests, please send them, comments, we'd love to have that. Um, let me remind you of a few announcements that we need to make. I, I want to just uh, encourage you to be in worship or Bible study with us on Sunday. 945 is Bible study, 1045 is worship. Uh, we're online uh, with those Bible studies and with uh, worship as well. So but we'd love for you to come if you're able and be a part and join together with the church and uh, and just participate with us, um, you know, in, in serving and giving and all of that. Uh, we want you to be a part. Um, in the way of announcements, uh, the uh, associational partnership meeting uh, next Tuesday night on the 15th, uh, February the 15th at 630 at the association office there on Hospital Road in Pascagoula. Be a great time for you to find out what's going on in mission opportunities uh, over the next few months and uh, maybe some plans that are being made in regards to that. Celebrate recovery on Sundays from 5 to 7. Uh, great things are happening with that, and I'm just kind of encouraged by what we're seeing, and so I want you to come and be a part. It's a great time to come to Bible study and a uh, short worship time and uh, just an opportunity to be together. Uh, also, this coming Sunday is the Super Bowl Sunday, where it's the fundraiser for children and youth camp, and uh, you can come and have all the soup you want for eight bucks, or you can carry some out for ten, and uh, then there's a silent auction for some homemade desserts. So uh, I want to encourage you to come and be a part of that and, and join with us on Sunday. Uh, you can call the office if you want to just let them know you're coming, but anybody can come on Sunday. We should have plenty. Uh, and we plan to have plenty, and we want you to be a part. Now, on Saturday, um, this coming Saturday, it'll be uh, KLZ, which is Kids Outdoor Zone for Boys and Men, uh, 8 o'clock. Uh, David Lilly leads that along with Patrick, and uh, they'll be doing that on Saturday. It's open to every man and every boy, and love for you to come. It's no girls allowed on that one. So uh, it's ki uh, Kids Outdoor Zone. It's going to be a fun time. And... Uh, just uh, come and be a part. Make sure your children can get here. Uh, also, the deposits are due for Kids Camp, Youth Camp, uh, Central Kids, Centrifuge. Um, those deposits are due, and so please make arrangements there to get those in uh, to be a part. Uh, while we're talking about that, re let me remind you about the roof. We've got almost 45000 and I sure would like for us to get that other 5000 in and celebrate with it. Uh, and so if you haven't done your part or if you're still giving praise God for you, continue to do that and uh, be a part. So we got some good things going on. And uh, I mean, worship over these last few weeks has just been phenomenal. Uh, just been a great time being together with people and seeing people just getting back and uh, able to be back and, and just been battling different things in life. And God's just moving. And we praise the Lord for that. Um, so we covet your prayers as staff, as church, as individuals. I want to encourage you specifically to be praying for Bud Duran. Um, Bud is, is, you know, been diagnosed with liver cancer and uh, having to deal with some things with that. And Oshner's Medical Center in New Orleans is working on that. And so I, I ask you to be praying for him. And then Buddy Gomes' sister, Marlene, uh, fell and sustained some injuries from that. And she messaged me uh, on, on Tuesday morning and just asked that we be praying for her. And so I challenge you to be praying. I know Marlene tunes in. She's probably listening. And uh, so I want you to be praying for Marlene. And, and her husband and her mom were there and helped. And uh, so praise God uh, for that. There's other prayer requests I'm sure you have. If you want to share those with us, we'd love to walk beside you in the midst of that. And uh, praying alongside of you and, and just being a part um, the, as you come online and, and you're part of the online campus family, we want to serve you and honor you and, and minister to you. If you'll let us know in ways that we can minister, we certainly want to minister. And uh, any walk, walk beside you in any way that we possibly can. So I encourage you 
uh, to let us know about those needs that you may have and in ways that we can join with you. Um, let, let me pray, and uh, we're going to jump right into the Bible study tonight and move along uh, with it. And uh, so I thank you again for joining us. Let's pray together. God in heaven, uh, thank you so much for the privilege of being before you and Bible study and for these that are joining. Father, I just pray for your blessing on their life. God, we pray specifically for Bud tonight and for Marlene and, and, and God, the needs that they have with the battle of cancer and with the fall and, and God, others that are, are just sharing their needs and God, as we walk with them and beside them, Father, you're a great and mighty God. And so, Lord, I pray for the hand of God to be so evident, Lord, for our country, for our leaders, our president and vice president, all the folks in our uh, legislature and things and decisions that are being made, God. I pray, uh, Father, that you would grip the heart of the nation and, uh, Lord, just uh, move in a mighty, mighty way. God, you, uh, you bless our time tonight. Lord, draw us close. God, most of all, may you get all the glory. May you get the praise and honor in Christ's name. Amen. So as we talk about simplifying your life tonight, um, you know, this past Sunday, uh, uh, John chapter 10, latter part there in verse 39 through 42, um, just pushing pause, talked about that and um, from the standpoint of Jesus going back, uh, you can go and look at that passage of scripture, some significant things that happened and Jesus uh, was headed to the cross in just a few uh, weeks, if you will, and uh, and just kind of had to go back, and we looked at that endeavor, talking about that, and and uh, you know sometimes I talk to you on Sunday about pushing pause. I I closed out with the uh, the rocks that we gave you, uh, with a different illustration than we did a few weeks ago. Wanted you to hold on to those rocks. Maybe you were not listening or were not here on Sunday. Those rocks just simulated uh, people that need Jesus or people who are out of relationship with Christ that you know. And uh, to put their initials and their names on that rock and begin to pray for them, pray for opportunities to minister to them, to talk to them about their faith, uh, to share your story. That's the main thing. People say, well, I don't know what to say. Just share your story. Just tell what Jesus has done for you. That, that's the main thing. And uh, so uh, to think about priorities, um, to push pause in life and, and make the main thing the main thing. And so... Uh, just kind of a continuation of those thoughts to simplify your life where it's needed. I think you would agree that uh, in today's world, we live in a hustle and bustle kind of world, um, uh, anxiety-filled life, uh, you know, where we feel like we're meeting each other uh, at both ends of the spectrum. Um, my dad used to say, you know, when you burn that candle at both ends, uh, something's going to happen. And, and that's really where life is today. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're stretched thin, more thin than we've ever been and uh, are thinner than we've ever been, and, uh, and we're still trying to do it. And when you look at Matthew in, in chapter 6 in the midst of the Sermon on the Mount, um, Jesus really in the latter part of chapter 6 talks about anxiety and how to, to get beyond anxiety, anxiety, and that's just simplification, uh, just doing what God really wants us to do and letting life get in the will of God. Uh, so many times we allow our lives um, to get outside the will of God. Uh, it's not necessarily, you know, what we're doing is not a bad thing as far as what we look at it, but it's not where God wants us to be. And, uh, you know, our battle so many times is between good and best, not uh, what's best or bad or whatever, how you want worse, uh, but it's between good and best. So I want you to think with me in, return, in regards to that and simplifying your life. I want to share some scripture. I'm going to give you several passages of scripture, and uh, I want you to think about it. Maybe you haven't read the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5, 6, and 7 of Matthew lately. Uh, you, you, you know, encourage you to go back and read it and think about that as what Jesus shared. Um, and tonight, as we look at Matthew chapter 6, I want you to, to look with me there at, at verse 25. And uh, and Jesus is speaking, and he's talking about the fact of lining up our lives with the Lord. He has just stated the fact that you can't serve two masters. Uh, you're going to hate one and love the other. Um, are you going to hold on to one, and you're going to despise the other? And uh, then he moves into chapter, uh, verse 25 of chapter 6, and he says, For this reason I say to you, do not be anxious for your life as to what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor for your body as to what you shall put on. 
is, uh, not your, is not life more than just food and the body more than clothing? Uh, look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are they not worth much more than, are you not much, uh, are you not worth much more than they? So you think about perspective there. You think about what we do in life and bringing everything together. Uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus says, do not worry. Do not be anxious about your life. Um, there's not too many weeks go by, even days that go by, that I don't hear the expression, I am worried, and the, somebody completes a sentence. Or uh, this worries me, or life worries me. Um, but Jesus says that you and I need to, to bring it in perspective. He doesn't mean that we shouldn't live without priorities, that we should not live without integrity, but it comes back to our faith in God. And that's what he's talking about when he says, do not be anxious, do not worry about your life. He says, look at the birds of the air, uh, you know, that they don't sow, they don't reap, uh, nor do they gather in barns. Why? Because the Father, God, takes care of them, he feeds them, makes sure of all of that. And uh, the writer Henry David Thoreau says, uh, our lives are, are, are uh, frittered away by detail, uh, frittered away, just wasted away by detail. And he says, simplify. So you think about that, the simplification of life. What, what a difference that would make in each of our lives if we would learn to simplify. Uh, there's a lot of things that we get involved with and a lot of things that we put demands upon ourselves. Uh, speaking to myself, remember when I talk to you, when I preach to you, when any preacher preaches, God has already spoken that to him. Or, and, and, and as we think about the teaching part of that, um, we need to simplify. And uh, Matthew six thirty three, Jesus speaking said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added to you. Um, that, that's, that's key right there when we talk about simplification. So we, we understand who God is, what God wants from us, and uh, we bring lives in perspective. Um, mo most people argue the opposite of Matthew 6.33. Uh, they talk about the fact of I must live or I must do this or I must provide for my family. I must make their needs, and we do. As men, God has challenged us to take care of our families and our needs. But that doesn't mean that you and I can't simplify. It doesn't mean that we can't order our life in the way that God wants it to be ordered. Uh, that's priorities and surrender, that we bring our lives into the will of God. And, uh, you know, God wants us to provide. God wants us to be uh, the people he wants us to be. And so, um, you know, when we, when we take the other road and we begin to say, well, I must do this or I must live, I'm going to do this, then really what happens is we put other things before the kingdom of God and we get life turned um, topsy-turvy, if you will, upside down because we don't have God uh, as priority in our life. And so when we think about the truth, um, God always wants to be first. He must be first. If we're going to get the full benefit of the blessings of God and the kingdom of God, God must be first. And uh, so we have to decide. Um, you know, it's easy to say the words, well, God is first. But the difficulty comes when we try to put feet to the action. And so I ask you tonight, is God first in your life? Are you allowing God to be first? Um, talk Sunday about the fact of, and several of you have commented, I know at least one post on Facebook about the 155,473 people who die every day uh, without Jesus Christ. That means they go to hell without God, and, and uh, you know, they have no salvation. So you think about that, and I saw several posts, and I saw one post that said, you know, are you going to be a statistic or are you going to surrender to God? And, uh, you know, that, that's the very much the key there. Are we going to share our faith? Are we going to share what Jesus has done for us? Um, you know, are we going to share what Jesus means to us, what he has done for us? Um, you know, life becomes uh, difficult. Life becomes puzzling because we don't ordain our steps according to the will of God. Uh, we don't let God lead us, and, and if we will just stay on our knees before the Lord, surrender to Him, then the Holy Spirit of God will guide us, and He will help us simplify. Uh, he will help us live our life in accordance to the will of God if we just obey Him. So you might say, well, how does all this come into play? When we, when we talk about the fact of 
not worrying about life, when we talk about the reality of God wanting to meet our needs, uh, how does it all happen? Well, let me just kind of give you some things um, biblically based, but uh, common sense as well when we really think about it. Uh, and the first thing is to remember why you're here. Uh, you might can rephrase that and say, remember whose you are. Uh, so many times we want to take ownership. Uh, the I, me, and mine approach. But the reality is Jesus Christ died for us. Our life is not our own. It belongs to God. Whether you're a believer or not, God owns your life. Jesus paid for it. Uh, God gave us life. He breathed into our nostrils so that we could have life. And so uh, you need to remember why you're here, the perspective, uh, you know, the fact of God's will, and, uh, and, and then finding out your purpose. I mean, you simplify life greatly by knowing your purpose, by realizing who you are and whose you are. Every day to life, uh, what does God intend for you? Uh, work, family, uh, recreation, hobbies, all of that. Simplify. Let God be God. Uh, rest, trusting Him, uh, withdrawing, and just getting refocused. Um, you know, you think about who you are, whose you are. Uh, selfishness never simplifies. Selfishness only complicates. And so um, when you think about life, think about the fact of what God has done for you. Uh, think about all that God wants to do for you. And remember why you're here. Uh, remember whose you are. Remember that God created you. Remember what John 3, 16 says. For God so loved you, and he so loved me, and he so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would place their, place their faith and trust in him, they would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. And so you and I must learn to reject the temptation to become uh, selfish, and really self-focused um, from that standpoint. And uh, when we do that, our own lives become a little G God, and we get out of the will of God, and, and life becomes more complicated. So uh, the first thing when we think about simplification is just remember who you are. Remember who you belong to. Remember that Jesus died for you um, and, and that he wants uh, to be involved in your life. Uh, he wants to be in control of your life. He wants to be the shepherd as we are the sheep. The second thing is, is to drop uh, useless goals. Take a look at your priorities. What, what are your priorities in life? Think about your strengths and your weaknesses. And uh, when you look at your goals in life, I hope you have some short-term goals, uh, maybe some long-term as well. But you seek God's will and you seek his kingdom first. Do your goals match up to the will of God? Do they uh, identify God's actions in your life and God's energies in your life? And so my encouragement to you tonight is to allow God to direct you. Uh, get, get on your knees before the Lord um, every day and say, God, I need your direction. God, I surrender to you today. God, I'm here for your service today. And so, God, I want you to control my life. Uh, let God have control of your time and your schedules. And as you uh, organize those, that you do that with the will of God in mind. And, uh, you know, you, you think... Uh, who, you know, the Bible says don't grow weary in well-doing. Uh, so many times we wear ourselves out doing the things, and they're good things, but they're not where God wants us to be. Uh, you know, empty events in our life. Um, you know, I tell our staff when we're doing fundraisers, things like that, we need to do the fundraisers that produce the most. Uh, you can work yourself to death doing the little things and never really get anywhere. And so many of us do that in life. But we need to pour ourselves into the will of God and do what God has called us to do. Don't wear yourself out uh, on empty events. Uh, look at your priorities. Look at what God really wants to do. Seek what's important. Let God breathe into your life through the Holy Spirit. Uh, determine your goals and uh, then organize your steps in order to meet your goals or reach your goals or accomplish your goals. And do it in the will of God. Uh, you know, so you drop the useless goals and, and you remember why you, you were here. Uh, you remember whose you are, and then you live each day in regards to that. And then here's the other thing. Remember, you can't do everything. Uh, remember, you can't do everything. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing. Uh, probably it's hard for me to say no. Uh, 
I'll be honest. Uh, you know, and we all do things better, uh, some things better than we do others. And, uh, you know, when we, we don't like to say no, um, you know, we, we stretch ourselves thin, and I do that. Uh, I'm just being honest with you. Um, you know, we learned one thing in Africa. When we first went to Africa some uh, 18 years ago, um, or, or 17 years ago, we, we learned some things there. You, you say no in Africa, and it's okay. It, over here in America, we don't like to hear the word no. Uh, and, and so it's, it's more difficult here. But in Africa, you learn to say no, and everything is good. So when we think about simplifying life, we have to remember that we can't do everything. Uh, we're stronger at some things than we are at others. Uh, so we focus on the strengths. You, you manage your time. You look at what takes place. Uh, Johnny Hunt told us a long time ago uh, in Timothy Barnabas that if you don't manage your time, somebody else will. And um, so uh, you got to manage your time. Uh, let others help. Um, you know, and, and, and what really happens when we think about that is that we delegate. And uh, I've gotten better. I'll be honest. I've gotten better at that. Uh, when we think about letting others help, it comes in the trust, um, you know, and, and, and you just learn to say no uh, and, and let God do what God needs to do um, and, and just simplify. Uh, I mean, when you multiply yourself, that's a, a great thing. And, and the goal for each one of us should be to multiply ourselves. So remember that, you know, you and I can't, you can't do everything by yourself. You need other people. Um, the fourth thing is to, to live one day at a time. Live in the moment with the expectation of the future, if that makes sense to you tonight. Uh, you plan well. Uh, you keep things in perspective, and you keep things simple. Um, verse 34 um, is a good word for us. Matthew chapter 6, um, verse 34 says that, Therefore do not be anxious or do not worry for tomorrow, for tomorrow will we'll take care of itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. <laughs> How true is that, right? Uh, each day will take care of its own. Uh, own. So you live well today, and uh, tomorrow's strength will come. You know, when we think about grace, God gives us grace for the moment. Why does he do that? So we'll depend upon him. He doesn't just fill the bucket up for a year or two years or three years. No, he gives us grace for the moment. And you and I learn to depend on him. And so... You learn to live in the moment for the glory of God. You learn to live in the moment by God's grace and by his mercy and through his strength. And his strength will come. The Holy Spirit of God is God inside of us, and he wants the best for us. And when we allow him, he's going to give us the strength. Uh, he's going uh, to lead us. He's going to help us make the most of each day and each moment. Um, but, but, but we can keep things simple. And so uh, don't worry about you know, as far as every day, the, the, don't be concerned with the things of tomorrow. Let today take care of itself and focus on that. And so uh, it's a big deal. Remember, we cannot do everything, and we need to live one day at a time. And uh, check our goals. Drop these goals that are, that are useless. Remember who you are. Remember why you're here. Number five, you can't slow the world, so slow yourself. The world is at a fast pace. Uh, on Sunday, we put up the world population meter and uh, how fast it was growing. And uh, I challenge you to go look at that. And you think about the world and how fast it's growing. Uh, you think about people dying, 155,473 people die every day without Christ. Um, and, you know, you can't slow the world, so slow yourself. Take, take time to smell the roses. Uh, wherever you find yourself today, be there. Uh, dwell in the moment, uh, bloom in the moment, survive in the uh, moment, flourish in the moment, uh, live in the present, and make the most of it. Uh, life passes so quickly, and, and you and I need to make the most of every moment. Uh, you know, when you get older and you realize your kids are growing and grown, and, and you look back and go, wow, where did the other years go? Because they passed so fast. So I want to challenge you to be who God wants you to be. Uh, make the most of every moment. Um, you know, stop and smell the roses and just realize whose you are. Uh, you know, push the pause. <laughs> Do a little reflection. 
Um, you, here, here's the reason, because you can't go back and redeem the time. Once it's gone, it's gone. And, and you and I cannot redeem the time. So we live today in the moment for what it is. That's why it's important to simplify life. Um, we can't slow the world, but we can control ourselves. Uh, and, and so you think uh, as you live one day at a time, you bring things in perspective. Um, you know, you remember that, that you can't do everything. You, you drop the goals that are not, uh, not, not meeting uh, or not producing the most. You may have to drop those things. Uh, and uh, you remember why you're here. And you remember whose you are. Those, are. those are big things in life. And when you find it difficult to alter the pace life is going, um, push pause and uh, just alter yourself. Uh, and then withdraw and get with God and, and get refreshed. Sometimes we just need a fresh breath of air, uh, the refreshing of God. And then when we're, God refreshes us, we're able to go and refresh others. Uh, it's like a fresh breath of air. And so it's important to simplify life. Let me give you one more thing, and uh, we'll close. The last thing I want you to, uh, and it really uh, speaks for itself, and that's to follow the best pattern, Jesus Christ. Uh, the best example. He set the example for us, so let's follow him. And Jesus took the time to, to slow down, to gain energy, to pray, to seek the Father, to reflect, to be refreshed. And, and that's exactly what you and I need to do. We need to go to the Father, and uh, we let God do his work in our life and refresh us. And uh, you simplify. You pray. Uh, you seek the Father's will. Uh, you, you follow God's outline for you. God has a purpose for you, and you let the Holy Spirit guide you in that purpose. Um, that, that's important. And, and according to the Word of God, you don't worry about tomorrow. Uh, you, you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and let God do the rest. Um, simplify life where it needs to be simplified and, and watch what God will do. You say, Pastor, I don't have a clue what to do. Start by praying. God, help me to know what needs to happen in my life. What things do I need to simplify? How do I need to rearrange my goals? How do I need to rearrange my priorities? What I need to do, Lord, to line up with you. And when you line your life up with the Lord, then there's a fresh energy. There's a fresh strength. And uh, you become more of what God wants you to do. And here's the deal. You're going to accomplish more for the kingdom, which is the purpose of God anyway. And so uh, all of us had, have had to get to that point to where we simplify really realize who God is and what he wants, and we remember whose we are. Uh, we remember why we're here. Um, you know, uh, that, that's so important. Uh, we really look at our goals, and we drop those goals that are not uh, as important as they need to be. And then we remember that, hey, we need to multiply ourselves that we can't do it all and uh, live the one day at a time and uh, just slow down and be who God wants us to be. Follow the, the best pattern, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ, right? So I hope you'll gain a little bit that, from that tonight. I hope that you'll take time to simplify, that you'll take time to rest. Um, maybe you need to draw close to some loved ones and tell them how much you love them, how much they've meant to you. Um, there may be some different things that you need to say and do in their life. It'd be a great time to do it. Uh, maybe, just maybe, you need to go along with God and say, God, you know, I need to get some things straight. And, Lord, I made a mess, and I need to just confess those things and get right, Lord. And I'm telling you, God will be there for you. If you would like to talk, we would love to talk to you. We would love to pray with you, whether it's myself or Jim or Patrick or Heather or, or Vonnie. Uh, call the office. We'd love to get with you, pray with you, support you, help you counsel with you, whatever we need to do, uh, we want to do that. So I want to encourage you. Uh, let us know you're listening. Let us know that, that uh, you know, whatever needs you may have, prayer needs, whatever, uh, join with us. If you have youth, children, we want you to be a part. Uh, Wednesday night madness starts at 3.30 on Wednesday afternoon with youth as they get off the bus, um, and they have a great time from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. Bible study, games, snacks, all of that. And then our children's activities are from 5 to 6. And they're working on some choir stuff, some songs, and they're having a great time as well. Uh, Sunday morning, we've got things for all ages. We want you to be a part, okay? Pay attention to what's going on around us in the community and what the church is doing. There's a lot going on, and you can plug into it, and we want you to, okay? God bless you. 
Have a good night and a good rest of the week. I want to lead us in a word of prayer, and then we'll close out. Father, thank you. Thank you for your love and grace and God helping us to simplify, to reorganize, to get our goals in order, to, to stop worrying about uh, life and just trust you, God, and allow you to meet our needs. Uh, God, you're an on-time God. And I pray for those tonight that are trying to wrap their minds around this and uh, simplifying life. God, we live in a complicated world. But God, you desire for us to live with uh, the priorities of God in our, in our life. And so, Lord, I pray tonight that we would prioritize our life on a day-to-day -day basis. And God, that you would get the glory. That's the main thing, Lord, that we'd slow down and we would dwell on you. So God, have your way. Bless the rest of the week. Bring us together on Sunday. Lord, you're a mighty God, and you're so worthy of our praise. And I thank you, Lord, in Christ's name, amen. Good night. God bless.